I, I love the premise of this show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about smart shit. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Now let's start the show. Shotzi! What's up, baby? How are you, my brother? Bro, um, uh, I'm good. I'm good. Or yeah, I'm I'm pretty good. How are you? Anything happening? Nothing You're crazy. Quiet, bro. No, yeah, You're really, yeah, <laughs> really quiet week, man. Yeah, yo, that can I can I say something? Yeah, yeah. even though that's I know what's we're, a podcast, we're, we're supposed yeah, to say right, something. That's right, the point. Right, right. yeah. Um, that that penis length thing hurt. Yay, bro. The penis length, bro. I saw. I saw him on what's, what's what's your guy's name? Lex. Lex. I met yeah. Lex at your wedding, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, very interesting person. That's the person I would really like to have a conversation. Yeah, with. we got to get Lex. Because I didn't know Lex was a real human. Like I thought he, I, I literally thought he was Joe Rogan's shooter. I don't know if he. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, did. oh I didn't know he had his own podcast. Yeah. I mean, I, I I knew after that night, but I didn't know he had his own podcast. I didn't yeah. know he was a MIT scientist. Yeah, he makes robots. I, are we sure he's not one? I think he might be one. Yes. Yeah. I'm not even joking yeah, when yeah. I say that. Yeah, yeah. The way he moves is just like very, very robotic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I saw Kanye on his podcast, and we can insert this. Kanye just volunteered that he had a big cop. People, just in general, they love me so much. I'm like actually a hard guy to really hate for a long period of time. It's just because like, because of like my huge cock. And that's what I noticed. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't understand why he showed it to me when we first met. But now I understand. Yeah, it's very nice. Congratulations. Congratulations. I mean, he just kept talking about penis. Size. It, it's because he wants that energy. Yo, big cock energy is some energy you want. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's some shit you want people to say about you. When my yeah. fuckers is out here saying, yo, you walking around with that 10 inch thing. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, I don't give a fuck how much money you got in the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't brag about the billions like they brag about the dick size. Even if you hear a woman say it, it don't sound the same. Woman be like, yeah, he got a billion dollars. Got a ten inch dick though. Whoa, whoa, that hits whoa. different. It's different. <laughs> it's <Literally>. different. <laughs> it's different. Kanye was in that interview talking about dick the way he talks about billions everywhere else. Yeah, you didn't find that interesting. Yeah, all of a sudden he's like, I don't care about money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got a thirteen inch dick. Well, I wouldn't care about money either if I was about to lose it all. Uh, you better not. Yeah, I will say that and we're um, recording this uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, it should come out tomorrow, depending on what Andrew says during the podcast. We have to edit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this has been this this will go down as one of the biggest L's a person has ever taken in business. Mm. And all year long, I've been thinking it's been two years. That's, it's been two things that's been on my mind all year long. Boundaries, meaning setting boundaries. It started with me reading a uh, Nedra Tawab Glover set boundaries, fine piece. Setting boundaries, but also I read a book called The Big Leap. Mm. Um, because self sabotage is at an all time high, man. Yeah. Like, I've seen so many people self sabotage this year that it is unbelievable. And this is just the latest case of somebody self sabotaging. Mm. And it's very, I don't even want to say sad. Sad isn't the right word because it's expected. Like we all saw this coming, but there is nobody to blame for this situation other than Kanye Omari West. Yeah. He did this all to himself. He yeah. made every single one of these choices. Yeah. All of these choices were rooted in bigotry. Yeah. Everything from the White Lives Matter shirt to the anti-Semitic comments, you know, even, even what he said about George Floyd, and, and that's not, the, we all know that's not the way George Floyd died. Those are white supremacist talking points. Everything is rooted in bigotry. So to see this happen, it's not a surprise to me. Are you surprised that it's gone down like this? Mm. I'm not until this, I wasn't until this morning. Why? Because I spoke to someone and uh, what they said to me is that, uh, and, he, and they believe this backfired. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. 
but they believe that he was tr- the goal of all this was to get Adidas to drop him. I do not believe that. I don't know why people keep saying that. I, I've heard that talking point. Th- this is this was not any strategic marketing plan to be dropped by anybody. Why would you want to go out like this? Because here's the thing. If you go out like this, you can't do business nowhere else. Well, I, again, again, it was executed poorly because now the brand is so radioactive, he might not be able to do anything. Yeah. Right? And it might be an incredibly stupid decision for multiple reasons, right? He didn't just lose Adidas with this. No, he lost everything. That's what I'm saying. But, but the other things didn't provide him as much money as the Adidas thing. So I think what a lot of people don't understand about the Adidas thing is that he gets a royalty for all the sneakers. He owns Yeezy 100%. That's not what they said this morning. This morning they said that they, I'll, I'll read, I'll, keep talking, I'll, I'll pull up the article. Okay, so my my understanding is that, uh, well, yeah, that's that's basically kind of what I was talking to. So basically, it was a licensing deal. So Adidas does everything for him, right? Yes. Now, it's a, brand, it's, a brand, it's a brand marketing deal. Sure. Yeah. So, but Kanye owns his trademarks, and eventually the, uh, the, the trademark is going to exp- expire and then, or the licensing deal expires and then he re-ups and has another licensing deal with Adidas. I think what he was very frustrated by was the fact that he had bosses. So Kanye wants this thing. He wants somebody to give him all the money, create all the infrastructure, do all the thing, but then he doesn't want anybody to tell him what to do. And that's not how the world works. If somebody gives you money, they get to tell you what to do. It's very simple. I don't, it, I, it, I, don't I don't understand why people even look at it like that. Yo, you got a partnership. It's well, cool. Uh, regardless, if you have a partnership or not, if you do have a partnership, a true partnership, that other person is going to have a say. That's yeah. what a partner is, right? Yeah, you have a absolutely. marriage, the other person has a say. Absolutely. That means sometimes they're going to tell you to do things that you don't want to do. And sometimes you're going to tell them to do things you want to do. And then you guys work it out. He does not want that at all. So what he, what I was told is he was trying to force their hand. Now, in trying to force his hand, he might have made himself so radioactive that nobody wants to do business with him at all. Because at the end of the day, when you really think about it, Adidas made all their clothes, distributed all their clothes to their millions of people, right? They have thousands and thousands of stores that people can just walk in and buy shit from, mm-hmm. right? They have the infrastructure. They have the relationship with the factories out there in China, right? They have the relationship with the materials, they can do all the things. Yes. Kanye, like he says, he goes, I'm a visionary. I'm a visionary. But what he means by that is, I don't do nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? He creates. I think. And that's fine. But I don't do. That's but, enough. You create. You but, create the design. But you need a billion dollar company to yes. do all that doing. Now, yes. if he does it himself, like if his idea was, yo, let me get Adidas the fuck out of here. I'll take all over the sneakers. I'll have the clothing brands. I got it. Here's the thing. He needs either his own cash, which who knows if he has enough, or he needs to find cash from somewhere else to not only create that infrastructure. He had thousands of employees with Adidas, thousands working just on his shit. You probably could get a line from the bank you was with, but oh, they done. They kicked you out too. So maybe, maybe the Saudis give him some money. Maybe some Middle East people give him some fucking money. But who's going to give the guy money who's just going ham, for lack of a better word, on the Jews? And uh, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Chosen one. <laughs> hey, man, when you got it, you got it. Bro. What, you got, what you supposed to do, man? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so who's going to give him the money if he doesn't have his own man? We all know he doesn't doesn't like putting his own money up. Well, he did that. And he, and he this, failed. Yeah. This, this is what uh, Adidas said. It's after a thorough review. The company has taken the decision to terminate the partnership with Ye immediately, end production of Yeezy branded products, and stop all payments to Ye and his companies. So that so that's the crazy thing. Well, hold on, so, but can I can okay, I say yeah, one yeah, thing yeah. on that? Yeah. The stop the payments is really interesting. No, it's not. Well, uh, I want to hear your perspective. Okay. But uh, the the thing about the payment is those payments are money that's already due, right? So the reason they're stopping payments is because they think that there's going to be a tough negotiation ahead to see how they're going to separate these businesses, right? So he gets a royalty. That means you get $5 on every sneaker or $30. It doesn't really fucking matter. So that's money owed to him. They're holding that money because they're going to work on a separation agreement. Generally, the separation agreement is, hey, you hurt our brand this much, so you pay us, but we owe you money from your royalties. Boom. he'll 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 get his money from the royalties. Well, that they're holding it so that yeah. they have leverage. Yeah, but in the negotiation, I, I think he'll eventually get if he, if he's old royalties, he'll get his money from the royalties. But moral clause, that's it. Yeah, that's it moving forward. And it says yeah. Adidas will stop the Adidas Yeezy business with immediate effect. 
Yeah. It said this would have a short-term negative impact of up to 250 million euros, which is 250, 246 million dollars of net income in 2022. Yeah, you heard uh, that? You heard that, Europeans? Your due, money worth nothing. <laughs> <laughs> due to the high seasonality nothing. in the fourth quarter, but this is where, what they say. Adidas added that it was the sole owner of all design rights to existing products, as well as previous and new colorways under the partnership, and they'll provide more information during third quarter earnings of November 19th. Here's the thing, man. Ego is a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. When you get on Drink Champs and you say things like... The thing about it, me and Adidas, is like, I can literally say anti-Semitic shit and they can't drop me. I can say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? Adidas is ending its partnership with Kanye West. The German sneaker giant says it does not tolerate anti-Semitism and any other sort of hate speech. Hate speech. That was one of the most ego-filled, narcissistic comments I've ever heard a human make in my life. Yep. And I always say nobody is bigger than the machine. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Don't yep. ever think you too big for any situation yeah. because they will show you that you're not mm. in a heartbeat. And the fact that you would say that for a company like Adidas that is a German company, mm. the founder was a part of the Nazi party. Was he really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't remember his name, a D, so, a D something. We'll pull up his name, somebody. And then- Aren't they brothers? Adi and then Das? And Germans, Germany has done a, a, a pretty good job with denazification. Do right. you think they're going to stand next to a Nazi? I mean, I'm shocked that it took this long. I'm shocked they were the last ones to do it. <sighs> well, they put the deal under review, right? They put the deal under review after the anti-black comments, right? And, you know, I keep hearing everybody having this conversation about, well, you know, nobody's standing up for black people, you know, the way Jewish people are standing up for, for Jewish people. I'm like, but that's the key. We're no. black. We're, we're we as black people standing up for each other. Well, were we as black people upset about Kanye West's anti-black comments? Because this ain't oh, the first time thing. Kanye has done anti-black comments. I hear you. This goes back to slavery was a choice. This goes back to Harriet Tubman, you know, didn't free the slaves. Yeah. This goes back to, hey, y'all need to stop focusing on race so much. Like, were we as upset as we probably should have been about those anti-black comments? Did we, you know, hold Kanye accountable? Mm. Or did we keep buying his shoes? Or mm. did we keep listening to his to his music, you mm. know? Did we make excuses for Kanye when he would have his anti-black rhetoric? Mm. Jewish community didn't play that well, at all. In no way, shape, or form. Uh, None. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, they, 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 this is unacceptable. They not standing for it. They not playing with it. Boom. Yeah, I would also say that, like, Kanye said uh, that when he gets canceled by the media or canceled by these companies, he goes, he's like, this is proving his point about the Jewish media. He goes, see, look, I'm getting canceled. There must be a Jewish media. He was on Lex's podcast. Lex was like, don't say Jewish media, just say media. Mm -hmm. Like, he goes, he goes, but see, this is it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, is it though? No. Well, well, I don't well, think well, so. well, I would say this is like, we've had owners of basketball teams, billionaires right. like Kanye West, say racist things. That's right. And what has happened to them? In a league that's 85% black, bong bong, you got to go. Immediately canceled. Yeah. By those other. Jewish owners, uh, mind you. Donald Sterling was Jewish. I'm saying Donald Sterling's last name is Tolowitz or something. I, like I'm that. saying, but according to Kanye, he's like, oh, all the Jew, Jew, only Jews own basketball teams. Yeah, well, yeah, all yeah. those Jews went to another Jew and were like, yo, you can't do that. Shit. That's right. Right. That's so right. I don't think that what's happening to Kanye is unique. I think we've seen it over and over again. When you say horrible things and you are beholden to massive corporations who care about their image. That's right. You get canceled yes. from them. Yes. It's I, not hard. It's, it's not it, rocket science. It's not science. Jewish media. It's this is the way the world works. They have to worry about you making you, their brand radioactive. So it's in your contract. If you have a brand marketing deal, it's in your contract. And not even just brand marketing deals. If you're part of a corporation, those moral clauses are in your contract. Yeah. They're there. Yeah. Certain behavior is not going to be tolerated. And bigotry is not going to be tolerated. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just not. I, yeah, I just don't think it's anything specific to him or this idea of Jewish media. I think we see it happen over and over again. Is that when people... Now, I'm not for cancellation in general. This ain't I, cancellation. No, gotta, I understand yeah, what you're yeah. saying. I guess what I'm just trying to say is he's saying it's something unique that's happened to him because he's going at Jews. No. We've seen this over and over again with people who have said racist things, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. We've seen it over and over in people yeah. who have done sexist things. Yeah. We've seen it happen. So yes. this, you're not unique in this. And way. it's happened to billionaires. It's happened to multi-billionaires. Yeah. Like shit, the guy, the head of the, the owner of the Phoenix Suns, he got to sell his team now. It's yeah. a matter of who's going who's going to buy it. Yeah. Because he said some racist stuff. Uh, The owner of the Panthers, we forget about him. What, I can't remember. I don't know. If he he might have died, though. But this was recently in like the past. He's still alive. The guy who had to sell his team looked at looked out. Mm. He had he had to sell it. He had to sell his team a few years ago. He said some racist stuff. He had to get up out of there. Mm. That's just the nature of the business. Mm. Like you're not going to run around being a bigot, spewing that kind of bigotry Yo, and nothing's going to happen. Bro. Lex said some fire shit to him. He goes, uh, it, it, the Lex interview is really interesting. You guys should who go check it out. Who programmed Lex for this interview? Was I don't Rogan? know. I'm not sure. I, it might have been Rogan. <laughs> I, he had a lot of empathy, so it might have been Oprah. I think. <laughs> I don't know. Like, and Lex is Jewish, right? Yeah, he is. He's Jewish. Okay. So, which is why it was specifically good. He's also from Ukraine, right? So he has, you know, close ties to what has happened to Jews in Europe. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Specifically yeah. his family. Yeah. Being killed in the Holocaust. So it was it was very interesting to like see him talk to him. There's a couple things that I think he brought out of Kanye that I didn't realize before, but are now incredibly apparent. Uh, one of which was... Dick Envy? Not Dick Envy, but yeah, you got to see it. It was uh, loneliness and hurt. Oh, you did, you just seeing that? But now it's so obvious. But Come but, on, Schultz. I, I didn't realize... Like there's some moments in the pot in the pot where he literally says he goes, "I don't trust anybody, and I only have relationships with people that are mutually beneficial." And that is a lonely way to live, bro. And that is that like is heartbreaking. That is a lonely way but, to live. But but if that is how you see the world, and that is how you see people, people only are your friends if they have utility for you. Everything's transactional. Everything is transactional. Now you can see why someone would act this way. You can see why someone would lash out at everybody. Think about the people who lash out at everybody. Those people are beholden to nobody through love, at least. Those people are saying, you'll talk shit about your, your wife. You'll talk shit about your wife's Word family. You'll up. talk shit about your friends. Word you'll up. trash your best friend. Like, you'll be incredibly competitive with them. Those type of people are wildly entertaining because they could talk shit at any moment. But at the same time, incredibly lonely. He talks about this relationship he has with God, and now I realize that's the only relationship he got. We need to start really, really leaning into God because nothing he's doing is of God. Nothing I've seen him do is of God. This, like, you know, he literally was like, it's just me and God. And it's like, you got kids, bro. Man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it's like, I, um, you got kids. No, I agree with everything you just said, man. And you know, that's my thing, right? I hope that... <laughs> This is what it takes for him to hurt actually people hurt people like you always they, say, man. They do. And I and I hope that this is what helps him to go find some real healing because clearly he's hurting. Right. <laughs> and um, I just I I don't see this ending. Well, I you know, I, I feel like he's moving like a person who doesn't feel like he's going to be here much longer. You know what I mean? And um, how long? How much longer? I don't, I don't. I'm not. I'm not even doing that. But I just. I just feel like he's moving. I just feel like he's moving a, like a person who's not going to be here much longer. And I also feel like um. Damn, I lost my train of thought because I'm really thinking about that. Hurt people, man. No, no. He, he's def he's definitely a hurt person. But I'm also just feeling like um. I'll go on something, and then when yeah, you remember, ahead. just just let me know. But I think there's something to this idea that like the immense pain that he probably feels. And don't get me wrong. He is a musician. Okay. He is a artist. We all know mm -hmm. that there are people in entertainment that have been taken advantage of. There's no question that he's been taken advantage of in his life. Okay. <sighs> oh, in his life. In his we life. all have. No, no. And I'm not yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, listen, there's been times you have, there's been times I have, we've been taken advantage of. That is, that is a natural course of the, of the business we're in as a natural course of life in a lot of ways, especially if you're somebody who has a talent or has value that other people can profit from. Yeah. So I can understand that resentment and that complete distrust in humanity manifesting itself in a hate. And Lex was given telling him one thing was really interesting. He's like, don't say Jew, Jewish media, tell me the people specifically right. that have hurt you say their names. That's the brave thing to do. It's not brave to just label the whole group It's brave to go, John Davidson or whoever the fuck. Say the names of the people that fucked you over. Yeah. You keep saying you've been fucked over. Say their names. Yeah. He, I, <laughs> You're not saying names for some reason. It's because he doesn't really have any names because I don't even think this was a fight that he was trying to fight. He was literally trying to deflect. He does this all the time. I tell y'all this. Mm. He is on a quest 
for white validation. Here's the thing, and I think that's what I wanted to say earlier. I'm not sure if this is what I wanted to say, but I think that's what I wanted to say. Kanye doesn't love anybody because Kanye doesn't love himself. Kanye loves the idea of whiteness. Hmm. Kanye wants white validation. He really wants to be accepted, you know, by 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 that crowd, by that circle. And he's willing to be accepted by that crowd and by that circle by shitting on his own community, yeah. which he does often, which he does often. Y'all, y'all got to get over race or, you know, uh, 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 um, 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 slavery was a choice or, you know, wearing the white lives matter shirt. Yo, you, what? So, somebody said to me, and they said this last week because, you know, it was me, you and Chris con- having a conversation. And it was like, Charlamagne, man, you too comfortable talking about a black man like that in front of two white people. Was Kanye not comfortable wearing White Lives Matter shirts in Paris in front of all them goddamn white people? What the fuck is wrong with y'all? And that's the thing that really bugs me about y'all when Kanye West. What do y'all see or hear about Kanye that makes y'all feel like Kanye is so black? Well, There's nothing about Kanye that's pro-black except for his rhetoric when he's in trouble. He, he taps in my when people. When he's in I trouble. Shepherd, that's yeah. it. Whenever he's in trouble, when he's in a situation like this, he becomes the most pro-black and, person and, alive. And think and <laughs> this thing, he snitches on himself all the time. It's so funny. It's like he's becoming the most pro-black person alive. And what did he say literally in the interview? It's I don't trust anybody unless we have mutual, mutual interests. Interest. So he's basically saying, yo, <laughs> yo, he's and he, yo, he, he's he's basically saying, your interest is the empowerment of you. My interest is getting out of trouble. So. Boom. That's right. I got you until I get That's out of right. trouble. That's right. And he talks out both sides of his mouth because he'll say things like, it's all of these bad deals, all of these bad deals that we've signed and yada, yada, yada. But then I'm a multi-billionaire. You should take advice from me. Why should I listen to anybody when I'm a, when I'm a multi-billionaire? What kind of bad deal did you sign to become a multi-billionaire? Yeah, yeah. Because I need one. <laughs> Give me the bad. Can I have the bad deal? Yeah. Have you ever signed a bad deal that made you a multi-billionaire? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like, come on, man. Why do we fall for this shit? Yeah, that's how I felt when Chris Rock said he was on the spectrum. Yes, sir. And I was like, well, give me that. Well, that's probably what makes rock rock. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Taylor, what's your question, Taylor? Boom. Dad, boom. Boom. Like boom. Boom. So remember when he got on stage to talk about Taylor Swift not deserving that award and everything? Mm-hmm. He would ride with him because it was for Beyonce. So where was that switch? Like, he was riding for us and everything else. Well, you all agreed with him. No, I, this is something that he'd done that's very interesting. What he's done right now, and I think he's done this before, but... He's done what Trump did so effectively, which was... Ooh, yes, go. He's tapped Ooh. into Ooh. counterculture groups Ooh. that have no famous representation. And what Trump did is he tapped into certain groups mm. that weren't being represented politically at all. Mm. And all you have to do is give them a A boogeyman. A you, boogeyman. You, you got to give them a boogeyman, but oftentimes there's a boogeyman out there that they already hate, but That's nobody right. is picking on that person. So he gives them little bits of crumbs. So if you look at the things that Kanye said, the whole like Jews run the banks rhetoric, there's a whole lot of people out that there believe that, that yeah. believe that yeah. and nobody in politics and nobody in entertainment is saying it. So now they have their guy. I was speaking because I got a lot of flack for shitting on Kanye, right? And I was speaking and I was speaking to some of these people who are shitting all over me. They're calling me a sellout and all this kind of shit. And I DM'd one and I was like, a sellout? Because they're they're like yo, because you're not supposed to censor people, Andrew. You're not supposed to call people out. You're you're, you're going Nobody's with the main- censoring Kanye. He, they're saying I'm going with the mainstream media narrative, basically. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let me get to the point. So he goes. So they're like this. So they go. Um, so for example, like they go, they go. Yeah, you you're part of the mainstream media right now. You're just trying to get the Daily Show job. They're saying all this shit, which I do oh, not know. It's, it's okay. It's fine. I did. I put it. I said. I said that in the interview. I said Andrew Schultz is the best guy. For well, he you're right. Complex you're right. But uh, but but yeah, you're right. But I'm not. Going <laughs> to, but uh, but I have no interest. Uh, <laughs> despite you being right. Um, but essentially, 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 what what all, what those people said that I was talking to, they go, they go. Listen, this is how they start the combo. I go, I go, why are you guys calling me though? It's like, can you explain what you mean by this? And they're like, oh, you're taking the mainstream narrative. I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? And he goes, listen, we all think Kanye's an idiot. They literally start the conversation like that. We all think Kanye's an idiot, but he's right about George Floyd uh, fentanyl, but he's right about the Jews having influence on the bank, but he's right about this. So all that is, is this famous guy agreeing with this one niche right. thing they care about That's that right. no one else is talking about. That's and right. Trump did that perfectly. He would tap into all these different groups that had no representation and he'd just give them a nod or a wink and they went 
crazy you saw for that, it. You saw the anti-Semitic group over the 405 freeway in L.A. where they got the yeah. big sign that says Bro. Kanye was right about the Jews. Do you know what it is? It's like What does that even mean? That's uh, such a blanket well, statement. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll go into it. But like, you know what it is? It's like you ever see like an R&B concert like, uh, like Chris Brown or even like Drake. Like they wink at a fat girl in the front row and the fat girl fucking loses it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's what Kanye is doing to these fringe groups or Trump is doing to the fringe groups. You just give them a little bit of wink and then ah, ah, whatever you want. Oh, right, man. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because they get no attention. Oh, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. So, so I thought it was <laughs> it's true, right? And that's what kind of so these groups, and then you see this, they're charged up. These that's motherfuckers, what I'm saying, man. Like, but by the way, this is what, to, what Chris was explaining last week, and what anybody who knows history knows. This is what Jewish people are afraid of. They're yes. afraid of a figure like a Kanye West yeah. riling up these anti-Semitic hate groups yeah. and anti-Semitism has been rising over the past few years here in America. Yeah. That's what they're afraid of. This, yeah. them being empowered, yeah. them being emboldened, yeah. run them back in the fucking caves they were at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go yeah. back to the golf course and go in the holes and go live under the holes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chris, you, go, or not. come on, Chris, come on. Here we go. Mask off. <laughs> Fuck it, mask off. I'd just like to start by thanking a lot of the listeners who left comments last week. This is the most Jewish I felt since I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> the anti-Semitism I got. My God. I haven't gotten that really? since I was eight years old. You, I've never felt this Jewish before. You was getting that much anti-Semitism? <sighs> Where that, guy, that Jew has his little hat on too tight. I was like, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's funny, bro. I know. That was, was funny. I was like, what the are they fuck? talking about? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of, a <laughs> lot of do hate. But no, that's true. That's I, cool. I, mean, I, I did, yeah. Thank you. We, we did mis identify you as Asian for the past four right. or five years. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. Sorry to uh, catfish everybody. But what you were saying, you were saying are not. I, I don't mind seeing that. I don't mind. I'd rather smoke them out. And, You'd rather know who the Jew haters are. But these yeah. guys are standing out in the open. But we, but they already knew about this group, though. They know about this group so much that they won't even say their name. I saw, uh, I was watching one of the news programs, and the the Jewish people who are discussing won't even say the group's name on purpose. Mm. Like they know oh, who this group is. Yeah, this is a known organization. I can't remember. I don't. I'm not. I don't remember the name either. But mm. they won't even say their name. They're a known organization. So I'm just saying, all Kanye's doing, Andrew's point, is emboldening people like this. Yeah, I mean, the reality is most people have not met a Jew. Most people have never met a Jew. Like, so it's like they know nothing about Jews. It's I like, know, yeah, well, I guess they don't. They just they just don't know yeah. anything about Jews. That's it's wild. like, this is, I hadn't really seen the picture in detail before. I mean, yeah. they're, they're giving the Sig Heil on. Yeah, they're going crazy. Yeah, they're doing the hell Hitler and everything. So the reality is like the only thing that they know about Jews is they hear that they run the bank. So they see them in like positions of power and positions of wealth. And if you do not have those things and you look at your life and you're, you're like, there's no way I'll ever get these things. That's an easy road for resentment. Right now, all of a sudden, they're your boogeyman. They're the reason why you don't have these things. Right. Sure. It's like, at least with black people, even if you haven't hung out with black people, they're so represented in media, maybe not in the ways that you want to be represented, but like you can't turn on a basketball game. You can't turn on sports. You can't turn on a, a MTV. You can't turn on the radio. They are. Well, I think it's because we present. locked into American culture. That's You're not true. turning on a basketball game and seeing a Jewish guy unless he's in the front row. There's a perfect example, I think, of, I don't know, you're Jewish. Were you offended by any of the things I'm saying? Because I'm making fun of the racist stereotypes about Jews. I'm fine. Right? Yeah. The dangerous one is, no, they, they are con in control of government. Right. Now you're like, wait, what? What? Well, that, that's why I like, I don't like, I mean, like the wrong word, but I'd rather see what's out there because at the end of the day, someone like Kanye hasn't convinced anybody that. Jews run the media or Jews are a problem, right? He's just amplifying, like you the said. Pe oh, this is so he's, he's amplifying those well, stereotypes that already existed. He's yeah, emboldening yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yes. two percent of people who heard him say that were like, you know, I never really thought about Jews that way. Yeah. Maybe no. They've been, like you said, waiting, waiting for, for, for their guy. Champion. That's right. Give them. That's and right. now they're like, thank you. Let's run. These it's guys like, are ready. It's like the conspiracy theorists when the Epstein shit popped out. It's like they've been saying that shit for a minute. Right. And then finally, once it became the part of the mainstream narrative, they were like, fine. See, we've been telling you this guy was fucking kids on an island. So they went crazy. It became the meme, yeah. became everything. Now they weren't lunatics anymore. All those conspiracy theorists during that Epstein time, time became 
the most logical actors. Yeah, Pizzagate was uh, what what uh, the the conspiracy theory of Pizzagate was justified. I understand what yeah. you're saying. Like yeah, you yeah, understand yeah. why there what that happened. You yeah. don't think it's justified to walk into a pizza place with a fucking AK-47, but you understand why somebody would believe. Oh, I wasn't even talking about the shooting. I was talking about just the conspiracy of Pizzagate. Ah, uh, yeah. Like yeah. so, all of these people that believed, oh, like these that the people Democrat are Party kids. were trapping exactly. kids. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. You see where the paranoia came from. Yes. Yeah. I just think. What's that? Which? He ne- it was all an act. Kanye West has never cared about black people. He you got don't on think TV that George time. Bush thing that felt real to me. That was an man. That was him. him he was saying that because he knew that's what the moment called for. Hmm. Do y'all not understand? This is who Kanye West is. Whatever the moment calls for, he will give you. I watched him in that Piers Morgan interview say he's not apologizing on one side of his mouth, then turn around and say, yeah, I do apologize to the people with the dead country. He does this all the time. He'll try to be all things to all people. That's why he's so entertaining. I mean, mm-hmm. say what you want. Watching the interviews, you'll be like, this guy's a total douchebag, and then he'll say something, and you'll fucking laugh. Like I told y'all last week, it's all fun and games till that fucking plane lands and the wheels don't come out. And just a week later, what we seeing? We oh. seeing a plane land without the wheels coming out. Yeah. You know what I mean? That shit is landing on his belly. Yeah. You know, he was worth a couple billion dollars last week. Now he's worth 400 million. It's still great money. Yeah. By the way. But I'm just saying you lost everything for what? That's that's what I want to talk about when I talk about just self-sabotage. What was all of this about? Well, I think that he's created the hero's journey in his mind. He has to free his people. He has to do all this he, stuff. Here's what, he's, here's what he's going to learn. Yeah. About the hero's journey. Yeah. Ain't none of these motherfuckers loyal. Well, he know. I think he knows they, that they, already. They, they, oh. they, they're laughing at him now. Well, yeah, that, now that, that you, is true. Now, now that you done lost everything and, oh, shit. Oh, now you're only worth 400 million. Oh, you're not worth a billion no more. Now yeah. they go. Now the, now the tide turns and you're, you're, the, uh, you're the court jester now. You were their king two well, days ago. Now you're the court I jester. I wouldn't even say that he was their king. I think he was also what, their, their what, just what, What's that trending topic right there? What is it? Damn, yay. Oh. Because this is what people do. They're with you when you're riding and you're rebelling, but then as soon as you get in some shit that you can't get out of yeah, and you good. fuck around and lose everything, yeah, now they're laughing at you calling you an idiot. Yeah. Calling you a jackass. Yeah. Well, guess what? I've been consistently calling him a jackass for a few years <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. I saw this shit coming a fucking mile away. And I don't... I just hope that, you know... I hope that he stays alive and heals. Yeah. That's what I hope. Literally, yeah. that's that's what I hope. I hope he stays alive, in 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 heels at some point. Yeah, and I ain't even just forget all the professional heels. Stuff. What? Whatever you said, he's hurting. I feel the same way. He's clearly hurting about something. Yeah, I think that he's. No, I I I think Kim Shore as well. Dick size, maybe Dick size, but like, yeah, I just think he's like a a really lonely guy. Like, if if you have nobody that if you're you an love, asshole, who wants to be around you? That's the other thing. You're a fucking asshole. Yeah, they say mean Dame are assholes. Wasn't that a line? In one I of I think Dame is a way better human than Kanye right. West. Yeah. yeah, because Dame will never make a statement like, "I'm only dealing with you because of mutual interests." Yeah, I don't think Dame likes transactional relationships. Right. I don't. That's not what I get from Dame Dash when I've interacted with Dame Dash and spoke with Dame Dash. <laughs> I think Dame Dash really cares about people. I yeah. think. I think. Uh, that's not what life is about, man. No. I mean, life is genuinely. You can break it down to like. To love, right? You know, that's what we're here. That's why we have relationships. That's why we have children. And like that love is what bonds us and kind of holds communities and groups together. And for a person that doesn't like to be used, to your earlier point, you don't like to be used by these corporations, but you're letting all of these white supremacist groups use you. Not only white supremacist groups, like what what you and another thing that Lex pressed him on is like, if you're so upset with the system and you're this genius visionary, create a better version of the system. Like you had a record label. And then he was like, but I was just in face only and they was doing it the way that they wanted to do it. And it's like, do good music the way you want to do it. Like, don't screw over your artists the way you were screwed over, which you were allegedly doing, according to Big Sean sure. and other people. Right. So it's like, you, what? What? That's a good point. No, I mean, that's that Akash brought up that point too. It's like, you you had the opportunity not to do the thing that the quote unquote Jews did to you. And then you did the same thing. It's like, yo, you could not make your shit in sweatshops, but you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you could not do all the fucked up things that you say that you don't yeah. like happen to you, but you do. Everybody wants a buck, man. Yeah, I wonder who's, you know, that's the other conversation that's been happening this week. Who's really responsible for the content that comes out on these platforms? 
The what? I don't. I don't please, please, please. The what? Please, come on. Just keep it here. No, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I don't, I don't know what she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kayla's not with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your hair so, looks fantastic. We're not. I'm talking about content as far as music and sneakers. You're just gonna ignore that compliment uh, yes. I gave you. Yes. Not, it's gonna get fucked up Friday when you go in that water, though. I just want to let you know. Yes, it is. <laughs> You're gonna get fucked up. You going surfing Friday? Okay. I, Okay, I We're don't gonna know say. if there's a board big enough. But listen, um, <laughs> there's, there's. What do you think? Who do you think is responsible for the content? Huh? What y'all laughing at? <laughs> what are y'all laughing at? What happened? <laughs> oh shit! What happened? <laughs> this guy, this what guy's a maniac, bro. This what guy's what an absolute about? maniac right now. What happened? Uh, what are you ooh, talking about? Ooh, that's a good point. What? You just did admit that she got more thick than you. Oh, I said that out loud? <laughs> yeah. What did you say out loud? <laughs> I said, <laughs> what did you say? I, I thought that was in here. <laughs> did you? Did you think it was in here? <laughs> <laughs> God. Keep it in. Make sure you do not cut that shit out. Make sure you do not cut Listen, that shit at all. Go. Who do you think is responsible for the content that artists make? Music? Uh, really music. Let's keep it at music. I think there's mutual... Look, at the end of the day, like I want everybody to be personally accountable, yeah. right? I I want that Gen genuinely, especially the older you get. I think yeah. you have the ability to be personally accountable. But that being said, it's like there's immense influence, right? So people are going to dress a certain way because of people that influence them. And we can't deny that as well. I mean, right now in Jamaica, I think they outlawed all music and TV shows that embrace like gangs and drugs. Now, they're trying to use censorship as a way to reduce influence. I think that you get the fucking Streisand effect or whatever that term is, where it just makes it even that much more desirable because you're pulling it away from people. Yeah. But they recognize that there is an influence. You know, I think even Kanye is trying to say is like, I want to create songs that my kids can listen to. And you know, I want I want to get away from this kind of like gangster stuff, which is like he's never he's never really been on it, been on against, yeah. which is also wildly convenient. I did not have to deal with this in my life. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, nobody yeah. should talk about it. <laughs> I think <laughs> you know? that you know, man. There's a phrase called "power to the people," and I think that we keep giving these corporations, we give these corporations a lot more credit, and we give them a lot more, um, we hold them a lot more accountable than than I think we should, because they're only putting out what they're given from artists, and they're only putting out what's being consumed. By the people. What they think will sell. Yeah. Well, if, if, if you don't want, if, if, if people didn't want the gangster shit, and, and by the way, if people are so upset about the gangster shit, don't buy it. Yeah. If you're upset about the music that de de degrades women and celebrates the gang culture and celebrates the drug culture, simply don't buy it. I promise you, if you stop buying it and don't consume it, nope, the artists won't make it <laughs> and record labels won't put it out. So ultimately, it's on us, the consumer. I think so. I think all of this is about outrage of people. You're upset that, you know, nobody came to the defense of black people during the slavery with the choice comments and, the, mm. you know, uh, uh, Harriet Tubman didn't free the slaves. Where, where are the people? We are the people that mm. are supposed to come to our defense. We're supposed to hold somebody accountable for that. Like, mm. if you don't like the gangster shit that somebody is, you know, putting in their music, don't buy the music. I promise you the artists will stop making it. The only reason artists have made this music for the past 20, 30 years is number one, yes, the socioeconomic conditions do call for it, but also because it sells. Yeah. That gangster shit sells. Yeah. People like that gangster shit. We consumed it. And not just black people. Everybody. America. Yeah. Because America, it ain't, it ain't even just about hip hop. America likes violent shit. We like gangster What's shit. What's the biggest thing on Netflix right now? De Jeffrey Dahmer. That's what I'm saying. We, America as a whole, likes violent shit. Pop culture is violent. You can go back to the old school westerns, cowboys and Indians. I mean, it makes sense. Mafia movies. We're rebels. Everybody who's here is a descendant of a rebel. They left their country. They yeah. left their way of life. They left their people. They went out and to have a new life and they have to push back and you got to fight for yourself in order to make that new life. Yeah. And you probably had to do some illegal shit. Ain't nobody came here back in the day and did everything by the books to make it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah, yeah. scrapped yeah. and they did That's a right. little. Look at the Kennedys. They're a fucking Coke family. Bro, every single. Not Coke. What is they it? Were, they were, no. No, no, no. Uh, Bootlegging. Alcohol, bootlegging. Bootlegging and alcohol. They were rum runners. Rum runners. Exactly. It's like you look at all these like refined, distinguished uh, families in American history. You could boil them all down to selling either drugs or alcohol, which wasn't a legal substance at the time. And there were some murders that happened. 
There were some people there. Yes. That you, you can't, what they say, you can't make an omelet if you scrap, if you don't crack a few eggs. Yes. That was derived of course. from white people killing each other. Yeah. I just made that up, but that shit sounded good. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? Because yeah. eggs and whites. A hundred percent. But yeah. my point is, we keep acting like hip hop is the only genre of music that profits off violence. That's not true. That's the American fucking way, bro. We don't act like that. I mean, well, no, no, I know. I'm saying some people in rock and roll, was some the people in the actual culture, music. Some, some black people act like that. Oh, gotcha, you know gotcha. what I mean? And they're, they're pointing the finger at the record executive and saying, oh, the record executives need to do better and blah, blah, blah. I think that it really is on the artist and the consumer. Yeah. Like yeah. the artist makes these. And by the way, even when they say that, right, they talk about the record. Executive. What about these people that are independent? They're making the same type of music. Mm. You know, they're making the same type of music because that's the type of music that's playing in the club. Mm. That's the type of music that's selling. Mm -hmm. That's the type of music that they feel like they want to make. That's the cycle. That's the cycle. So you can't just point the finger at the record executives. Like it's like it's not like record executives are sitting there saying, "I need you to make a record about murder." Yeah, I need you to make a record about killing. Having been in not a record executive, but having been somebody who's in charge of putting together a playlist Mm -hmm. at one time, I didn't listen to a single fucking song. Right? (laughs) I just was like. I'm just okay. This is what is playing. This is what people. This is how we're going to rank it. I mean, it's you know, and I think the irony is, I think consumers are in a better position now than they've ever been to make those sort of choices. Because at least when I was growing up, you could argue I didn't have a control over what was on the radio. Yeah, right. Like they were just feeding that to me. Yeah, and then I get hooked in. You decide now. And when you give us the freedom to do it, we actually make decisions that are a little bit better for ourselves. You know, like McDonald's don't want to sell salads. But shit got sticky over there. That so they're like, all right, Supersize we documentary. Exactly. So now we got to get a little healthy, <laughs> right? right? So That's the more right. options we have. But you're right. At the end of the day, it's like we decide what we consume. I'm old enough. I was born in the 1900s, 1978. I'm old enough to remember, you know, there was a time none of that shit was in the music. Late 80s, Rakim wasn't yeah. talking about that. It was there. It was just more balanced. It was, I think it was a lot more balanced, but it's like Rakim, Slick Rick, the Big Daddy Kane's, the Public Enemies, the KRS One. And then you had NWA. The Goody Mobs, the Outcast. NWA came in like right. late 80s, early 90s. You know what I mean? And when that shit started selling, that's what everybody started doing. When the West Coast took off with that gangster shit, that's what everybody started yeah, doing. Yeah, but it's also like a reflection of like time as well. You know, like if you're if you're rapping in the 70s, that's the end of the disco era. Everybody's get we're getting out of this war. Everybody's having fun. They're doing drugs. Everything's cool. 80s is the crack era. So you get violence. Social you economic get, conditions. It, music reflects that. Exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, by the way, and, and there's, all, there's always been balance. It's just about what you want now. To Chris's point about the, the era that we're in, the balance is definitely there. But if all you do is listen to maybe the radio sometimes, you know what I mean? You might hear a little bit more future or whoever than, than, than Kendrick. You know what I mean? But it's not like Kendrick don't exist. It's not like over the past decade, the three biggest rappers of the past decade, th- three out of the four, ain't on none of that. J. Yeah. Cole ain't on that shit. Yeah. True. Kendrick ain't on that shit. Drake, def- Drake. Drake ain't on that shit. Future's definitely on that shit. You know what I mean? I mean, Drake on it a little bit. Not really. Yes. No, Drake Drake has some songs that are about like, yo, you could get shot up too. And... Is that again? He's an album of 21 Savage. Oh my God, he's 12 years in the game. Can he make one killing album? No. I'm okay with him making <laughs> like, a bunch. He's 12 years in the game, y'all. I'm okay my with God. him making a bunch. He's, he's giving us a bunch of love songs and reggaeton nah, and all Drake, that. Like, Drake, Drake is giving us every genre. If he want to put out a... And, and by the way, we don't know what 21 album going to sound like. The, shit, the title is uh, it's, it's Her Loss or some shit like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, nah, Drake is the motherfucking goat, man. Like He's up there. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to knock all I'm simply saying This is, generation's unden- undeniable. Like who's close to 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 Drake uh, this depends, generation? It, de- it depends. It depends. It depends what you call. I mean, it depends what you're basing it on. You never had a party like yo throw on that Kendrick, bro. Yeah, but you at that you throw on that Future. Future, yeah. Future, right there. With future, you. yeah. I, but, I mean, Drake, Drake is still a yeah. Drake is still a bigger artist. But J. In, Cole, no. Culturally influential, Future, right there. Bro. Oh no, I, I I think musically influential. I I agree with Kanye. I think I said on this very podcast, I was like the most influential rapper in the last fucking. 10 years or whatever it was, I think is future. Just the way that people rap is differently because, different yeah. because of him. Yeah. yeah. And I completely agree with that. Yeah. I just, I just want us to all self stop self-sabotaging, man. Yeah, self-sabotaging. That's the, that's, the, that's the thing that everybody needs to sit back and study about this situation. Yeah. All of these wounds that have happened to Kanye West over the past couple of weeks are self-inflicted. He didn't, nobody did this to him. Yeah. He did this to himself. Those words were choices. 
Yeah. Those actions were choices. Yeah. Y'all can sit around and try to blame these boogeymen and say this person did that, and this person did that, and it's because this per person's in control and this person's power. No, he did that to himself. Yeah. I think so anyway. Well, let me, because you, you said something about the hero's journey, right? Like he's trying to... <laughs> Slay the dragon. But this what being dragon? A, but this I mean, being a victim part of the hero's journey, because that's what I hear from him, right? Yes. Like, I'm a victim. Yes, that's what he's doing right now. now been, yes. These things have been done to me. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. and I'm like... Is that, I don't know. Like, where does that come from? Narcissism. Because that's what narcissists do. They want to have self-pity and they want to uh, be a victim in a, in a mess that they, they want to be a hero and a victim in a mess that they created. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In order for people to root to you for you, you have to be going up against a more competent foe. Right. Nobody's going to root for you as the bully. Right. So he has to create... You know, even if it's like the Jewish media sounds like a bigger boogeyman than Dave Silverman. Dave Silverman screwed right. me over. Whoever, sorry, Dave Silverman. I don't know if you are a real person, but like it, he sound that's way more dangerous. This ominous looming organization right. than just these two lawyers that might have fucked him. And here's the reality. There are going to be people that fuck you in business. Jews, non-Jews, everybody, Muslims, Hindus, everybody's going to. Not everybody, but there will be people to fuck you. And that's the lesson that you have to, that's why community is, is so important and friendship is so important. Because when you find those people that you truly believe won't, you got to hold them near and dear. Right. That's right. You got to hold them near and dear, man. It's interesting because I'm w when you said that, I'm thinking about it. Like if you even go back to college dropout, which was probably like when I was most engaged with Kanye's music, mm. like that was the myth that he created about himself, right? Like I wanted to be a rapper. Nobody, Nobody believed, believed, believed in me. me. I had to prove it over and over then. They wouldn't put me on. Yeah. There was this yeah. force trying to, and I bought that. Yeah. Now, if you look at it in retrospect, man, you were in the building with these guys every single yeah. fucking day. Yeah. Like, you had direct access. He didn't have the best voice. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, he wasn't yeah. the best rapper. Like, the, the yeah, pushback. I, he honestly, had the, he had the best ghost writers. I can, I can relate to Kanye in that way where it's just like I had a lot of, of, of success in like traditional TV, but I wasn't getting opportunities in comedy. Right. You know what I mean? And then sometimes being so close to it and not being allowed is even more painful because you're like, wait a minute, I I'm here. Right there. I'm right here. Yeah, Where's the person right who's there. not even yeah. in the room? So I, I can understand and where that starts to play, that journey starts to like happen in your head where right. like they're not going to allow me. They're not going to do it. And how motivational that is. It's Every boxer, I imagine, in the beginning starts to build this backstory about who the person they're about to fight is. We know Jordan would do that all the time. Absolutely. Oh, they really think that they could stop me. And I took that personal. And I took that personally. So maybe he's using it as fuel for his fire. LaRussell La Russell has a great album title. And his album title is, uh, I Hate It When Life's Great. <laughs> and, you know, some of us deal with that. Like, you know, some of us go to therapy and that's what we talk to our therapists about because when things are going really good, if you're used to, you know, uh, if you have a certain level of PTSD and you're used to bad things happening all the time, when yeah. the good stuff happens, you can't even allow yourself to enjoy it. Yeah. Because you're like, what? This isn't going to last. Happen? Something yeah, bad yeah. is going to happen. Like, this yeah. is a mirage. This isn't real. Yeah. I feel like that's where, that's what he, that's what he was at. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, my dad used to call it. I don't know if this is a technical term of besieged mentality. Yeah, like you and I, I, I have that sometimes. Like I have a fantastic life. I, I hit the fucking lottery. You can't yeah. tell me. At the same time, I don't always feel like there are a million knives. You know, like I just constantly kind of see the world that way. And I think that's probably what he's suffering from. Like the sense that no matter what's happening, no matter how great it gets, I'm under attack. Yeah, yeah. They, the barbarians are at the gate. If I don't fend them off, they're going to come in and, you know, like, and maybe it fuels you. to Keeps you on your uh, P's yeah. and Q's. Yeah. I just, man, I just don't like the self-sabotage. And I think there's a lot of different conversations happening uh, at once. But the moral of the story is Kanye West is a Nazi. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, call I'm, hey, I'm calling him KK Kanye because by textbook definition, if you go after black people <sighs> and Jewish people in a couple of here's, weeks, here's you're a thing. goddamn Nazi. I don't want to call him. Listen, I don't want to call him a Nazi. I don't want to call him Hitler. Like, obviously, I did not call him Hitler. Nazi behavior, though. Sure, sure. I, I, I did those jokes in the rant. And then people are like, you're calling him Hitler. And I was like, no, I called him Hungry Hungry Hitler because it's a pun. It's like a funny thing to say. But what I, I, I do push back on is when we get into this How world, do we know he's not Hitler, though? Well, uh, think about Hitler's origin story. Which I've been reading about this week. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. He was an artist that wasn't appreciated. Uh, he was I'm not saying. even an artist. What he really was was homeless. 
No. For a long time. Why? Did- that's why Kanye been dressing yeah. like that. Now, <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Let's go, Chris. Unpack. This guy but, was. But you get what I'm saying, real quick, because yeah. I do want to hear this. But you get what I'm saying is like, if we start calling everybody a Nazi, nobody's a Nazi. It loses its impact, exactly. right? It gets diluted. Is this if- not Nazi behavior, though? No, Nazi behavior is is incinerating all the Jews right. and trying to wipe them off the planet. I don't think that's what Kanye is. Is this not Nazi rhetoric? All. Yeah, he's flirting no, with Nazi rhetoric. Okay, and he, all right. He's okay. got to get. Okay. No, no. And He's taken flirting down. with Nazi propaganda yeah. that was used to convince people to be okay with removing all the Jews from the planet. I don't think that Kanye's end goal is to remove all the Jews from the planet. I agree with you, but guess what? If you, is that fair to make I, that yes, distinction? I, I, I want to be. I, I get what you're saying, but if you lead to the rhetoric of somebody that decides, yes, Kanye's right. Now yeah. I'm gonna go start taking black people and the Jewish people out. Yeah, you would have you sparked that. No, that's 100 percent. You sparked that. That's 100 percent. But I just I just am delicate about calling everybody a Nazi or calling everybody Hitler, like literally, because then when there is the real one. But you don't get but you don't. It's get, true. You, you don't get to the real one. You, if you if you stomp it out now. Right. And mm-hmm. label it now, you'll never get to a real one. True. That's which is good, that's a good which that's which good is looking at it, too. For me, it's Trump. Right. Like I've been very quick to call Trump a fascist, yeah, yeah, yeah. a Nazi Hitler, because I think. But Trump is so pro-Israel and like his kids are Jewish. Well, I mean, I mean, there's there's a whole. The Jews way, fuck with Trump. Jews well, that's, like that's Trump. what I was about but to say. Be there's a whole there's right now. Jews are very much on the same page. Right. Like Kanye's bad. Yeah. There's a whole nother conversation that doesn't happen too publicly within the Jewish community that needs to take place with the fact that there are, I mean, you can look, you know, whether it's Stephen Miller, Trump's speechwriter, whether it's the guy, Lee Zeldin, who's running for governor. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, Breakfast Club. yeah, I mean, these are guys who I think are getting in bed with fascist forces. And that's another conversation. And it's complicated. It's nuanced. Just the same way that, you know, what's anti-blackness within the black community is complicated. Like, where's the line? Like for the Jews right now, the line is very clear. But if we're being real, once you go be- push beneath the surface a little bit, it's not everybody's on the same page. But you just said it's very real about uh, the line, right? Because right. when it comes to black people, we don't, it, it seems to not know what the line is because slavery was a choice that didn't right. seem to cross the line. Harriet Tubman didn't free the slaves, didn't seem to cross the line. Flirting with fascism by giving Trump a, right. a lap dance in the White House didn't seem to cross the line. You know what I mean? It's the, it's the truth. So it's like, 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 get, like getting on, getting on drink champs and saying, you know, George Floyd, um, you know, didn't uh, uh, died of fentanyl and the, the cop didn't have his knee on his neck like that. That didn't cross the line. So it's just like, can we clarify that a bit? Because I watched that whole fucking Candace Owens documentary. Did you watch it? No. First of all, and I, I was that kind of time. <laughs> I said this on uh, I said this on flagrant, but like documentaries are more dangerous than guns, bro. Like I would let every person have a gun before I let every person make a documentary. Because it shapes your your <laughs> thoughts. Like a gun only makes you think something when you point it at. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying like if somebody's like, "Did George Floyd die fentanyl?" You'd be like, "Uh, sure." As long right. as that gun is pointing, and then yeah. when that gun goes away, you'd be like, he ain't dying no fentanyl. But a documentary will actually yeah. make you feel a certain way. Now, I watched it. The fentanyl thing is very flimsy. Uh, it, incredibly flimsy. He had low levels of fentanyl it, and it, meth in his system. It, it's regardless. Very low levels. It's regardless, it, it doesn't matter what the levels are because there's one person that said that he had lethal uh, levels in the system, one of the corners. But you don't know what lethal levels are for his system. Okay, I was at Burning Man. Every person there is on lethal levels of drugs. They're not dying. This is also a user of the drug, so he might have a higher tolerance, okay? And I was trying to make this point on on flagrant. I don't know if I did it that well, but basically, now all of a sudden, when something's in your system, that's the only thing that kills you? Because during COVID, the same exact people were saying that bodies were overreported, right? They'd be like, just because yeah, you're yeah, old yeah. and you have COVID doesn't mean you died of COVID. Yeah, yeah, just because yeah, yeah. you're, you're in a car accident yeah. and you have COVID doesn't mean you died of COVID, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. now when there's a little fence in all the system, it's that's the only thing that could have killed you, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. The guy had an enlarged heart and most importantly, another person put pressure on his body, called his neck, called his back, it doesn't matter. While his lungs are on the ground, restricted his breathing by putting pressure on his body, okay? Yeah. Was he choking him out in an MMA way? No. But was he putting pressure on his no, body to restrict No, he had his knee in his neck. That's breathing. how he died. He died because his disc got crushed. That's 
autopsy said. No, it, the, the, no it's a, a, forget the doc. Go look at the real medical. You know, they declared it a homicide before. Cardiopulmonary it, arrest is what they called it. Yeah, because of the pressure that was on his neck. I, I, I personally, and I'm no fucking scientist, I think it wasn't the pressure on his neck. I think it was the pressure on his chest and lungs. Like, remember when we were kids, you play that game where you go up against a wall and go like this, and someone pushes against, you take a few deep breaths, yeah. they push against you, you pass out for a second. I think that happened to him for eight minutes, and you just don't come back up. I, and he had an enlarged heart, so he can't already pump the oxygen through his body that he needs. Either way, the cops killed him. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> like, and, and, like, we, and, and, for, and for anybody to go out of their way to try to disprove, disprove that the cop didn't kill him when we we watched it well, with our eyes. And, well, what it was How is... How much do you hate your own blackness? Well, no, it, it, mm -hmm. it's not only that. It's like there are people that are anti-Black Lives Matter, right? And they see this as the start of Black Lives Matter because it was, right? It was the reaction to this that blew up Black Lives Matter. Now, so foolish, the people though. that are upset at Black Lives Matter, the organization have every right to be. Yeah, but you I have mean, a, you have a better case with that. You I, could do a, you could do a whole yes, yes, doc. Yes, yes, yes. But you're the, asking people to be rational when like, they're not. Did George yeah. by the way, George Floyd shouldn't have anything to do with this. You can you can, you exactly. could literally, you yeah. could literally say, "Hey, but it's Derek Chauvin, the movement because they're using his death to raise money. But it's because the cop killed him. The cops in jail for well, 70 and, plus years. And another interesting thing about. And uh, the, late, the, the other cops just played. One of the other cops just played guilty this week or well, last week. Oh, I, I didn't know that. But yeah. another interesting thing about Chauvin is if you look at what he was charged with, because Mark went over the charges and the charges after watching the Candace documentary, you wouldn't even dispute. They're not saying he premeditatedly looked and found him. It was involuntary manslaughter, murder in the third and. One other, one other one. But it's like, yeah, this is what happened. He didn't go out there and try to kill the guy, but his behavior is the reason why he's dead. That wasn't his first body either, though. Interesting. Oh, no, no. He killed, he killed, he killed somebody in the, line, in the line of duty before. Well, I mean, that is part of the job. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know. Uh, I, I'd have to see what happened with the other situation as well. I guess what I'm saying is, even after watching the documentary, because I got so much pushback about this fentanyl thing, I was in no way fucking convinced. But I watched the whole fucking thing. And especially focusing on that fentanyl part. Now, criticize Black Lives Matter, the organization, all you fucking want. What they did with that money is absolutely hysterical. Like, hysterical. Spent two and a half million on, like, trans dancers. Makes, say it like, <laughs> you know I, mean? I don't know if that's been proven. Cause she, no, I, proven because the IRS reports where the money goes. So I, all, I, I, heard that, I, heard that, I heard that that stuff in the doc. Is, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't watched the doc, but I heard a lot of that stuff in the doc is liable. See, man. docs need to be. And uh, that's, why, and that's why she, that's why, you know, Candace, remember Candace said last week she might, Sue, Sue George Floyd's family for the distress that they're causing her over potentially suing her. It's weird. It's just yeah. some convoluted wow. but nut what, shit. What's the larger play for the documentary? Like, okay, it, the, the, the make Black nominally... Lives Matter look bad. Okay, and they could have just done that. Black Lives Matter has given. There's enough things there with the Black Lives Matter organization where you could make a doc the 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 the, the show the fishiness of that organization. Yeah, but this is also like personal vendetta because she got so much flack for coming out and saying that George Floyd was a piece of garbage person and all and that, this other that, stuff. That none of that means he should have been killed at the hands of the police. That 100%. None of that means. One, that. And even if you do believe that he had fentanyl in his system, you definitely do not believe that the police have the right to kill a man because of that. That's right. And by the way, if that's the case, then let's go to some of these white neighborhoods where the opioid epidemic is through the roof and yeah. these white kids is on meth all Yo, don't the talk, roof. Don't talk about my people. Yeah. Just, yeah, let's yeah, go yeah, to some yeah, of these yeah. neighborhoods and just start taking people out and let's see if people say things like, oh, well, they deserve it. They're just a bunch of meth heads. Right. Oh, they deserve it. They're just a bunch of opioid addicts. Right. Like, come on, man. We know what this is. And that's exactly why they have a Black Lives Matter movement. Yes. You know, not the organization. The movement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. But I just, I just, I just, um, as far as the Kanye thing, man, I say it again: anti-black rhetoric, anti-Semitic rhetoric. People are upset that people haven't been speaking out about the anti-black rhetoric. I just think it's wild to blame other people for not standing up for us. If we would have raised hell like other folks, and we would have held Kanye accountable, then some of those corporations might have moved. The same way. That's a fact. You know, who, kno fact. who knows? Well, but by the way, we'll never know. No, because you do it. Not only times. we didn't do it, and we're still there's people still defending him now. Mm. Everybody, he's a grown ass man. He got to deal with the consequences of his actions. Yeah. Kanye West don't need nobody coming to his defense. Do you think you know what Kanye West needs? Yeah. Healing. But do you think that when you your dick is that enormous, you don't <laughs> feel like you can do anything? I don't know if his dick is that enormous, bro. I, mean, I don't think he, I don't think he got nothing on Meaty Petey, bro. You don't, oh, no, dude. I don't think I, you know why? Because we ain't heard it in the streets, bro. Kanye been out here a long time. How long Kanye been out here, bro? 
I think he's been out a while, but Kanye I, been out a couple decades, bro. If Kanye had dude, to meet he, if, if, Con, if Kanye had to meet Yeezy, we would know, bro. But dude, he's gotta have a huge dick, dude. Salute to Tesla Figaro. Tesla Figaro coined the term meaty feet, meaty Petey when it comes to Pete Davidson. I don't think Yeezy got it. You bro. don't think Yeezy got nah, it? I don't think he got he's it. He claimed bro. it. Huh? He claimed it on college dropout. He's saying huh? he got the biggest insect. Did you was it, you my... don't listen to lyrics, Chris? Now all of a sudden you can remember this. I said college dropout was the last one. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Something about insects in Texas. My dickhead is bigger than insects in Texas or some shit like that. Whoa. Last call. It was on last call. Well, somebody know, can man. go find yeah, it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't compare your dick to an insect. Yeah. In if, Texas, though. If if your dick is an insect. Everything is bigger your, in Texas. If your dick yeah. is the insect and Pete's yeah. dick is the lizard that eats the insects. He <laughs> feeds yeah. off them goddamn insects. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 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 I really I really do uh hope I don't know how this ends, man. How do you think this ends, man? Oh man. <laughs> yeah, no. I I don't know. I think that uh, he's I think Kanye is entertaining enough where he can keep talking and people keep listening. And yep. then I don't know if he'll get backing to do his own thing. He might have to put his own money up for it. And the problem with him putting his own money up for it is that a guy like Kanye, who's like a true creative, what makes him great at being creative is what makes him bad at business. And that's why he needs to partner with these companies to be successful. The things that he does by his own, by himself, are not successful. The things that he does with other people who are businessmen are because the businessmen get to step in and they go, hey, lunatic, you just made us make 100 different sneakers. Now you're saying, <laughs> now you're saying you don't like any of them. Yeah. Too bad. We're going to put some of these out, you know? Yeah. So I that's think he's going to be part of the conversation for the rest of my life, unfortunately. Yeah. For better or for worse. He's not. I don't, I don't. I, I just don't know who will give him the money and who will create the infrastructure. And and if he does go on his own bruh. with Yeezy, it will have to be literally. Bruh. We're talking, all jokes aside. Yeah. Everything y'all talking about is like 10 years, 15 years down the line. Like this, 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 he's one of those kind of messes that it takes that long to clean up. Well, it's going to take multiple years for him to even get out another line with Yeezy. Like what Yeezy? Like his brand. Bro, there is no Yeezy. What Yeezy? There's it. Adidas has stopped production. Yeah. Well, Only thing I hope is that those slides don't become a symbol of hate. Oh no, those are the mess. That's the new MAGA don't, hat. Please. Bro. That's man. a new MAGA hat. Them shit is so comfortable. I don't want to wear crops. Wait, that's how, that's how Republicans felt that MAGA has a great hat. That shit wasn't fire. Man. No, dude. Nah, yeah, Maga yeah, 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 you're crazy right now. Maga had wasn't fire. The design was simple. The color was too bright red. The text cheap. and font was garbage. It was cheap. Looked cheap. Yeah, cheap. that shit didn't look fire. You li- show what you're lying to yourself, bro. You know what? That's you a- sound like Kanye talking about Pete's dick. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. What, why nobody get, we need Kanye to talk about yeah, Pete's yeah, dick. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you something, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I go back and I watch... That Drink Champs episode where P- Kanye was like, you know, when Charlamagne got on the air yeah. and said, Why are you, you talking know, about another man's meat? He said it so calm. He didn't say it with the confidence of like, I know my dick bigger than Pete. Yo. He said it like, Yo, he said Kim with Pete because Pete <laughs> dick bigger than mine. He said it like, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yo, can I tell you something? The, one of the funniest things he said in the, in the Lex interview, <laughs> he goes, this motherfucker's funny, bro. I don't care. He goes, he goes, <laughs> he goes, listen, I knew that Kim could never love Pete. I knew that. Oh, because he's white. He, no, 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 no. He goes, I knew that never, uh, I knew that Kim could never love Pete. And it's not because he's ugly. It's because she likes black guys. Now, throwing in the it's not because he's ugly. <laughs> it's oh, I saw that. that shit was such a. I, 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 tell, I, tell you, I, 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 I saw that. I saw that clip on academic page, and it made zero sense to me. And I'm gonna tell you why it made zero sense to me. It made zero sense because he named. It's not because he's ugly. He named. It's because she likes black guys. This, 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 yeah. this, this, this how you know Kanye West. It's a wild thing to say. This about how you know Kanye West. West wants to be white. Yeah. I saw this on academic page. He, yeah. he goes, Kim got a type. Ray, Ray Bush, J. Ray J. Me. me. Oh, none of y'all look alike. No, no, none of y'all fucking look alike. But a white man would think all black people look alike. Don't none of them look alike. Then he goes, like yeah, me, yeah. I got a type. Your girls definitely look like him. Ooh. <laughs> but none of the black people you named. You don't think like, they look similar, yeah. Come on. Bro. I agree with Come you. on, man. Totally, totally. Come on, man. They like, they look like, <laughs> they look like nothing alike. At they all. look like before. Oh, nothing at all. And then totally like, 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 like Kanye is before. He's the wide totally. hip having guy. 
Definitely. Right? And then Ray J's the middle. Okay, Bring he's starting up Ray to get J, in shape. Kanye, and then Reggie Bush and Reggie is the Bush after. And side by side pictures. They please. don't look nothing alike. I agree with they you. They look like before I've been that. <laughs> working out after about a year, and then you're describing, three years of working out. You're describing the same person. Before and after pics are the same person. There you go. They look nothing alike. You know it's what? a before, a middle, and after picture. It's like that would be the same person. Kanye looks Which like. Look okay, so okay like. I got it now. I got it now. <laughs> Kanye, Kanye looks like a Kardashian before surgery. <laughs> And Reggie Bush looks like a Kardashian after surgery, right? Wow, Reggie Bush in good shape. Yes, that's what I'm saying. He's a good looking yeah. guy, right? Reggie yeah. Bush. Yeah. He's in a different league. What, Texas dickhead? Yeah. Chris, whatever the fuck, insect dick, whatever you say. You think, <laughs> he, got the, you think he got the monster, though? Yeah, pay some bills, man. Do the square space. That's not how the lyric was. The lyric was, um, I have a buzz bigger than insects in Texas, not a dick bigger than Okay, sorry, Kanye. Yeah. And then also the Chargers were second- Degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. You know, for Derek Chauvin? Yeah. Man. Let's pay some bills. I'm tired of talking about Kanye, man. Yeah, me Let's too. Go. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace, okay? Squarespace, I'm telling you, if you have a business and you do not have a place online, you do not have a business. Online is the marketplace these days. It validates everything that you have going on. You need to make sure that website is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And that's where Squarespace comes in because they have everything you need to make the most beautiful, creative, professional, and unique websites on the market. Okay. They got your back in every way possible. Make it stand out. They got beautiful uh, templates that you can use to engage your audience, build your, your, your business online, okay? And also, uh, you can sell your products, your content, or even your time with them. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in the way that fits their brand, okay? They got the member areas so you can unlock new revenue streams for your business and free up your time for your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, newsletters, etc. Okay, create pro level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story and grow your audience and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect and email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. They got built-in analytics that measure the impact of every cent. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get back to the show. Church announcements. What you got, Schultz? Yo, um, uh, I have a new collab coming out with Yeezy that will be out sure. in, uh, uh, the MAGA red colorway slides. I heard about them. The MAGA had no, red no, colorway no. slides. Uh, just check out, just check out uh, Infamous. If you haven't seen Infamous yet, man, we're very stoked. Already at 8 million views in a month. So that was, uh, that's just awesome. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you for spreading the word. Uh, what about you, Charlotte? What you got? Same thing, man. Hell of a week. Every Thursday night at 11.30 p.m. on Comedy Central, man. Um, we just keep getting better and better every week, man. Cultural institution. Cultural institution building one episode at a time. How um, many more apps you got in the season? Uh, I think we're done right before Christmas. Oh, so you going all the way through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we got, yeah, got extended. Um, I think we got extended after episode eight. I remember you told me they got the extension, but yeah. you weren't sure. Yeah, we got extended after episode eight. And so, yeah, we're there until the end of the year. I know Trevor's last day is the eighth, so I think we might be the next week. Trevor's last day is December 8th. I think we're December 15th or whatever that is, the very next week. Mm, that's and cool. then we'll be back uh, and what top did, of the year. What have you seen uh, have the most success from the show? Were there any parts of the show that you think have done really man, well? Man, it's interesting, man, because it's just like anything else that we do, right? It's just about the conversations, like things like, you know, uh, like a lot of the panel conversations, you know, 
the interview, like it's the same, it's literally the same thing as is doing it the a panel. Brand. Is it the one on ones? Like I've seen both. a lot of your one on ones go viral. Yeah, like both. Like last week, uh, last week, you know, stuff from the Stephen A. Smith clip went viral when yep. he said, um, you know, he he wanted Will Smith to play him prior to the slap, you know, uh, but now he don't want Will Smith to play him because of the slap. Um, the Killer Mike thing has been a talking point for the last three to four weeks when Killer Mike. Literally said Brian Kemp had an effective week, one fucking week, and everybody lost their goddamn shit. Like, you know what I mean? He yeah. said he had one effective week with black people. That's that's been a talking point for for a few weeks. Um, a lot of stuff, man. The kid, the the Michael Cohen. We had Michael Cohen on last week, Trump's former attorney, and just even me saying like, just me talking about stuff. Like when I do my Act Four, and I'm just up there by myself. Like Fox News went crazy with the Hunter Biden thing when I was saying how. President Biden didn't have that same energy and compassion for, you know, all of those people that he got locked up in yeah. the 80s and 90s. Yeah. You know, with Hunter and Crack, it was, you know, compassion and empathy. Yeah. And, you know, he's fighting his addiction, but it was lock him up. Lock up them Crack. Lock him up in the 80s and 90s, you yeah. know. So it's just a little bit of everything. So, I mean, you know, every week is... Good things to focus on, like seeing what is resonating. Because I think it's so hard to tell, like, what resonates through TV because most people are consuming content That's right. at their own time. That's right. So it's a cool thing to look at and be like, oh, wow. When I'm just talking straight to the camera, that's going viral. Okay, should we bring that up earlier in the show, or oh, we how do, should we... I do now. Yeah, start. We go. We call it uh, this week in hell. And I start off. I start off with just I end. I start the show the way I end the show. Okay, so it's just me talking straight to the camera for a few minutes. Then we bring the panel on. Panels on there for the next two acts. Then the one on one guests. Like the whoopee thing went crazy yeah. viral. It's it seems second. like those one on ones are. I mean. That's that's part of your genius zone. You're a great interviewer and, and you can elicit information that people want to to indulge in yeah. from your guests. So, I, yeah, for me, I don't know. That's how I always look at those shows. Like, obviously, with yours, I pay more closer attention because you're my brother and I just want you to succeed. But like when I'm seeing constant parts of it be viral, I'm going, OK, there's something here. Absolutely. Put the finger on that. Absolutely. You know? So what's happening? Uh, I appreciate it. Um, and that's it. Let's get back to the show. Uh, salute to Van. I just saw Van post this and it proved my point. What I was talking about, Van posted this video. It says, for anyone wondering why it took anti-Semitism for Kanye to be dropped by Adidas, this video is from June 2018, one month after the slavery was a choice comment. There are people in this video who told me personally how lost Kanye was. They were less mad when the invitation came. And it's literally like a bunch of black notable celebrities, people that I also know spoke about Kanye. Big Sean is in that video as well, right? <laughs> you know, but they're having a good old time with you. Yeah, Unconditional yeah. love, thank you. Thank you thank very you. much, bro. Yeah. I, I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you, family. Hip-hop is the first art form created by free black men. And no black man has taken more advantage of his freedom than Kanye West. There's nothing wrong with that, but you can't have it both ways. You can't say... Oh, this you, is right after the... A month after slavery was a choice. So who held him accountable for that? Nobody. Oh, they're all in Wyoming? That's They're all in Wyoming. Uh, That's my point. Uh, like, no, nobody held Ye accountable. So I'm not looking for anybody else to stand up and speak out for, for, for blackness and black issues. We got to hold each other accountable. Yeah. Simple as that. Because trust and believe, they do. Those other communities definitely do. They hold their own accountable. Facts. You know? So Facts. we got to do the same. Um, this is a crazy story. New York City man arrested for fatally stabbing person who didn't say thank you after holding the door. A New York City man has been arrested after allegedly fatally stabbing a man. Taylor Wood put the picture right over what I'm reading. <laughs> a New York City man has been arrested after allegedly fatally stabbing a man who confronted him for not saying thank you. Um, that's all it was about. He opened the door for the guy. The guy didn't say thank you. So the person who opened the door said, the least you could do is say thank you. The guy goes, I didn't ask you to open the door. <laughs> Yo, then they on. both get into an argument, dispute. The guy who didn't that's say crazy. thank you ends up stabbing the guy. That's crazy. I didn't ask you to open the door. That's crazy. Whether you ask me or not, I did it, motherfucker. But I don't so owe you a thank York, you. Though. I don't Say know. what? It's so New York, though. It That's is wild, point. right? <laughs> like, Listen, by the way, if, if anybody ever wanted to know why New Yorkers are so rude and New Yorkers don't talk to you and New York, you can say hi to a New Yorker and they won't say shit back, it's because of situations like this. That's crazy. It's because of situations like this. And, and, and I hate it when motherfuckers don't say thank you after opening the door. But you don't scream at them. I say you're welcome. 
That's that, that's rude. That's rude. And that's some New York shit. Because yep. Angela Lee and Envy said the same thing. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you something else. <laughs> that you're welcome can lead to some shit like this. Yep. Motherfucker, you don't know what kind of damn motherfucker. But who be got having. stabbed here? The, the the guy who uh held the door. Exactly. Wait, what? Yes. <laughs> the guy who held the door got killed. Oh, I'll never open the door for <laughs> The guy who held the door got Fuck killed. That. By Fuck the way, that. that you're welcome can be because you say you hold the door for somebody, they don't say thank you. You're welcome. The fuck you mean you're welcome, yo? Mm. The fuck you mean you're welcome? I mean you're welcome. I hope I open the door. No, 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 no. Say it with the bass. You said it before. You're welcome. All right. And that now, now you're tussling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now you in a person tussling. My thing is this: if you are going to do something for somebody, don't expect nothing in return, man. You know what I mean? Yes, common courtesy. Somebody should say thank you, but open the door because you're just a nice person. Hold the door because you're a nice person. You know what I mean? Nah, say thank you, bro. I, I, th yes, that would be good in a good, a perfect oh, world. But this ain't a perfect world. You know, the only people I tell to say thank you is my kids. Like when somebody does something nice for my kids, I do something for my kids. Like, you know, they'd be like, hey, can I get this? Can I get that? And you hand it to them. What do you say? They say thank you. Clearly, nobody ever told this person that as a child. Why are you watching this? That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's introduce Steve. Steve is a, a former NYPD police officer. All right, so the guy that's in the, the guy that comes in. Yeah. With the white. Yeah. Right? He's arguing with the other guy with the black with the black outfit, with yeah. the dark outfit. Who held the door? So the guy with the white shirt held the door. He don't look like a door. He, he pushes him. Oh, the words wow. Words are exchanged. Right? As he runs out, he tries to run out. The guy with the white shirt follows him. He's trying to get on his bike to leave. He rushes him again. That's when he gets stabbed. Oh, I so the, the white shirt guy, guy follows him right, out. You see it now. If they show the second part of that, they don't show. I have, I have the clip to that. I'll show you guys the second clip. Yeah. Now. So the guy, the guy runs away, tries to get on the bike. The other right. guy chases him out. Again. So then he stabs him. He stabs him. I gave him the wrong guy. Donkey today. I wanted his thank you. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> you gotta take that back tomorrow. Bro. I gave the guy who got killed donkey. The no, day. I gave the guy who stabbed him donkey today. But that was really in self defense. I didn't know. I didn't watch the video. I just read. See, I just read the fucking story. It just Damn, bro. Damn, bro. Damn, Damn man. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> be like that sometimes, bro. It, it be like that sometimes, man. Jesus Christ. It man. really do well, by the be way, like that. By the way, if you start a fight with a guy after holding the door for him, how hospitable are you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Why would you start to fight with the guy like that over him not saying thank you? No, nah, I, I like that energy. Because you're from New York. I'm from New York. If I do, if I'm from New York, I got a lot of shit going on in my day. If I take something out of my day to help you, yeah. the least you could do is say thank you. Yeah. What else we got, Taylor? <laughs> Let's see here. Nah. <laughs> Taylor said you I don't want to talk about, about NLE dick. Chopper's meat. Taylor said you want to talk about more dick. Remember we used to do dick talk? Dick segment. And then this whole podcast has turned into a dick segment. <laughs> what? I, what? what? This is so funny. Glorilla <laughs> responds to little Duval making fun of her name. <laughs> Duval said nobody born after 2000 should be named Brenda, Linda, or Gloria. And Glorilla took that to heart and said nobody over the age of 45 shouldn't still have little in their name. I think points were made on both sides. <laughs> but then, but then Duval goes, but I'm Lil. <laughs> <laughs> but she can say, but I'm Gloria. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? That you is know? an old ass name. Like, but she didn't pick it. Yeah, but she just picked, like Duval didn't pick his size. But she picked Glorilla. This was God's plan, not neither one of them. Yeah, but rappers change their names. Her name is Glorilla, not Gorilla. I said I Glorilla. Mean, fuck? Gloria. That was Holy crazy. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm need to chill. Hold on. You I'm need just realizing chill. her name ain't Go Gorilla. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Go. It's Glorilla. I didn't know that. Sorry, it's Glow. Glorilla. I had, I swear. You were calling her something else? I was calling her Gorilla. I don't know what, I was saying Glow. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I was saying. I was just saying the woman who sang Fuck Nigga Free. Salute to her. She on her way. Memphis native Glorilla. <laughs> Gloria Hallelujah Woods. That's a fire name. I don't know what she talking about. Did you see Black Adam? No, you see it? No, nah, I hate DC. I'm committed to hating DC. What do you mean? How good they say the movies are. I fuck with The Rock, so I, I'm going to go see it 100%. I like The Rock, too, but not enough to go see Black Adam. Now, listen, I will go see... And Mo Amers in it, too? <laughs> That's what they used to do the podcast with Neil, right? No, no, no. Mo, Mo is a... Comedian? Comedian. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's I got the show, Mo, 
on Netflix. I, I'm going to wait till Black Adam comes to uh, HBO Max or some streaming service. Fair enough. It'll yeah. be on there soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what else, Taylor? Maybe do some Asking Idiots, Taylor? Yeah, let's do Asking Idiots. Drake and 21 Savage got, out, got an album coming out Friday. I, cool. can't, I can't wait to hear that. I really don't. I really do because I like the collaborations that they make and I feel like 21 be having Drake on some real rapping shit. Mm. So I can't wait to hear that. Pull it up, Taylor gang. Pull it up, Taylor. Back it up, Tay. Back it up. What we got? What we got? Uh, ooh. ABG underscore Minko said, what's the best business move you've ever made? Schultz? The best business move I've ever made. Mm-hmm. That's what, that was the question? Yeah. Uh, buying back the special. Mm. Without a doubt. I mean, mm. without a doubt. No mm. question. No question. Also the most risky, also the most dangerous. But also the most lucrative. But by far the most lucrative. What's the best business move I've ever made? I don't know. But that is how the most lucrative moves are the ones that are often the most risky. Some people get lucky by just like having a small percentage in a company that eventually blows up. Yeah. But if you want to go all in on something, the reward of that is... You know, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? I mean, the, the, the beauty about you know you doing the special, you've seen a ROI already. Yep. So that's when you know if it's a good business move. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. So some of your your seeds might be planted Except right they're now. Planted. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So the ROIs are, uh, have yet to come in, but it's looking good. I, I would I would bet on me. So until that, so instead of that, what would you say the best business move was, man? It depends, man. Is there a Breakfast Club thing decision that you made that ended up? I know that you would always push them to keep shit on YouTube. Probably, yeah, probably. No, for me, probably it was um, taking uh, taking the opportunity to work with Wendy Williams without a paycheck. Ooh. Yeah, when they when 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 they told me I, we can't, when they said we can't pay you, but we can give you a place to stay, absolutely positively, moving up here from South Carolina to work with Wendy, recognizing that opportunity, even though there wasn't a paycheck attached. That was how did you eat? What did you do for food? Sometimes I didn't, you know, and, um, yeah, and I just started meeting girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you a munch, bro? Feed me, see, you a munch? I was a munch for Damn, lunch. Damn, bro, I, I didn't know you was a lunch. munch like that, I bro. munched for Sometimes lunch. Sometimes you got a munch for Sometimes lunch, Sometimes you got a munch for lunch, You got to bring your munch box to work, Sometimes bro. Sometimes you got a munch <laughs> for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right, man. Okay. Um, do you think... Oh, this is a good... This is yeah, all you show. Come on, bro. M. Duffy, 17, says, do you think that women in comedy are as respected as male comics? If not, why? They're not as respected, and and that's because they're not funny. <laughs> that's his opinion. And, nah, he, nah, and, nah, and nah, he, got, nah. he got to deal with the nah, smoke nah, of his nah, opinion. Nah, nah, nah. I'm just teasing. I'm just saying. Do I think women are are not as respected in comedy? I don't think they are. And um, I think that's because women as fans are not as big comedy fans. Mm. And so in the same way, the WNBA, mm. you know what I mean? It's like if women really valued stand-up comedy and the female voices in stand-up comedy, then they would put them on the pedestal in the same way that they put other creative women on the pedestal and speak about them in that way. You know, there have been women that are incredibly respected and the people love. There's no question. And they're incredibly talented. But at the end of the day, if they're speaking to the female condition, it's up to women to say if they're speaking to that condition in a, in, in a way that is uh, should be on Mount Rushmore. It's not up to guys. It's not a bunch of guys going, yeah, that woman knows women really well. Yeah, How the yeah, fuck yeah. would we know? I got I got a few women that I put up there, though. Joan. Joan Rivers. Uh, some more for me. I yeah, think some more absolutely. is phenomenal. Honestly, uh, I think I think black female comics. Oh, Adele Given. No, I think they've. Oh. I think they're far more respected. One by I think maybe black women are more interested in stand up, and black men will definitely go support black female stand ups more than white people are supporting white female stand ups. But I mean, I like think- it was a normal thing. Like I remember because I came up in the black circuit a bit as well. It was a normal thing to go see us some more to go yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It, it wasn't like a. Oh, that's a girl comic. It was that's some more. We're also acting like the black comics that pop have a big white fan base. It's only 
there's only a few that have like big white fan base. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, the you're Chappelle's, right. The Rocks. Yeah, you're right. Maybe Cat. Kevin. Oh, definitely Kevin. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Kevin, I, I, Kevin got such a white fan base. I forgot. Yeah, they even put. <laughs> you know, I, I he forgot. stopped being white. Oh man, I forgot he, he stopped being black. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait till his new set comes out though. Yeah, his new set is great. Rest, uh, rest in peace to Kevin's um pops too, man. I think. Oh yeah, very, RP, man. I think it's very cool to immortalize somebody that's that important in your life because so many people know Kevin's father that never have met Kevin's father mm. because of the stand up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because of the stand up, because of the yeah the jokes that he wow. said about yeah yeah Good his dad point. in the special about the stories he's told about his dad in the special and even yeah. in the, it's interesting I, I was wondering how his set is going to be now because when I saw him at the garden a few months ago and um I you know I haven't spoken to him you know just because you know you get people that you know you send your condolences and you you know send flowers and stuff and give people their time but it's like um his his new set has a lot of his dad in it mm. but it's about his dad's health fading yeah you know what i'm saying so i wonder how much that changes your set as oh, a comic oh wow, yeah because people haven't even seen that yet yeah that's a that's an hour that he's been working on the reality check hour for the past year and some change yeah but a large a large part of it well i guess he you know I, I see how he can change it now, now that i think about it because all he has to do is talk about the fact his father passed away and how his father was in his last days oh yeah easy fix now yeah you can you can switch some yeah, stuff yeah 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 but uh salute to kev sending on um, the whole heart family healing energy uh what the heck the 13 says what instantly ruin a movie for you what instantly ruins a movie for you easy when motherfuckers tell me about it yeah they give you the ending of it <laughs> yeah yeah what is this <laughs> ain't no way bro ain't no way <laughs> There's ain't no way, bro. There's just no way man, it's real. Man, There's no way it's please real. Please go to Fibio. I don't know if this is real. Fabio, Somebody just Fabio, sent me this. Fabio. Is this Fabio Foreign's real page? There's no way. Somebody oh, just yeah. sent me a screenshot that There's says no Fabio stands with Jewish people. Spelled J U W E S H. Fabio stands with Jewish people, no cap. <laughs> J U W E S H. Come on, man. Oh, really? This one. <laughs> had. <laughs> what Chris said? That's yeah. the original Hebrew spelling? That's yeah. what he said? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do Chris Robinson 34, man. Let's get up out of here. Uh, How long do you think you would last in? Scroll that down, Taylor. Taylor, 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 fingers too thick. <laughs> How long do you think you would last in the Game of Thrones <laughs> of the Dragon's World? How long do I think I would last? Hella. <laughs> Hell long, the longest. I don't even know what the fuck. I've never seen it. So oh, you gotta know. watch it. It's great. Uh, it's just great. Why do you think you'd last long? It's like Burning Man, right? With dragons. Exactly, dude. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> That's what I heard. I heard it's like Burning Man yeah, with dragons. It's like Burning Man, dude. No, it'd be great, man. And also, as, as a dude, I don't have to give birth, and that shit is mad hard in that show. Men give birth on House of Dragons. No, the women do, but like it's it's hard, bro. <laughs> I think it got easier since then. Really? Uh, you think? <laughs> the fuck shows? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Was it easy watching your wife give birth? Hell no. That shit is always stressful, especially especially with the the black maternal death rate being so high. Why do you think it's so high? I have no idea, but I know that. Um, well, I, I I do have some ideas. I think it's because people think black women have a higher tolerance for pain. Like with our third daughter, literally, they didn't have uh, any epidurals. epidurals available. And like, what do you mean? What? Where'd you ha where'd you where'd you do it at? Think about that. I was already up. It's no, my third like, daughter. Were you in Anguilla or something? No, like we was in Jersey. In America. In New Jersey. They that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And I was up. It's my third daughter. This was on this was 2018. God damn. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they didn't have no epidurals. And I remember the the, the nurse was just like, well, the, the doctor was like, well, the baby's the head's right there. You just push it out. The fuck? You know what I'm saying? And then after that, it was like so much wow. blood because I, I I forgot I forgot why she was bleeding profusely so much, but that shit is scary. Like mm. that shit is one of those things where it's like everything isn't okay until it's okay. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's just like a high level of like from the time that water breaks, the whole well, no, before the water breaks, when the contractions start. Yeah, and you know you realizing okay, it might be time, it might be time. Like oh, water broke. 
Man, bro. That shit is fucking, yeah. Intense. <laughs> but what about squeezing a You'll baby see? out? God willing. God willing. What do you mean God willing? God willing. If I have children, I'll be you able God, to. You got you have a few. I know. I, but I have to. I don't think it's one of those things you take for granted. That's one of the oh, things no, that no, you look right. at, no, you go. No, you're right. You're right. You know? You're right. You're absolutely right. Um. Okay, Taylor. Get to the mic. Boom. Boom. Yo, fuck him what? up, yo. Well, fuck him you up, get on yo. This mic? Yo, fuck him up. Yeah, yeah, Let yeah. him see, fuck Tay. Him. Let him see the hair, Tay. <laughs> fuck him up. Let him up. see the hair, Tay. That hair is all coming Shout out. Shout out your hairdresser, Tay. One wave. Shout One wave on okay, Friday. Okay, shout out your hairdresser, Tasha. God, God Diva Trushes. She's amazing. Okay. Um, okay. No, but just for Halloween's sake, yeah. I saw this question. Y'all both watch uh, scary movies, right? Yeah. No, I don't pay people to scare me. So you never seen like Saw or I think I might Freddy. have saw the first Yo, one. If you want to see a fire horror movie, watch X by a director named Ty West. He has a new movie out right now called Pearl, but that it's this scary? movie X, it's scary, but it's also like beautifully done and I, it is fire. Like he he's like a real filmmaker and it, watch it, watch it. Yes, watch it. X, it's called. All right. So who what do you think you, or who you think you will survive? Saw? The movie, uh, Freddy, uh, Jason, or Mike Myers. I'm fucking Jason and Mike up. Yeah, I'm, but Saw, you can't win. You might. So that, what nah, because so? aren't the things set up where they you, are? But is this you sacrificing your arms and legs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck all that. Nah, the but like a Freddy, Freddy. I'm not fucking with that dream shit. I like dreaming, bro. Fuck out of my dreams. <laughs> but Jason and Mike Myers can get smoked. I think all you gotta do is try to fuck all three of them. <laughs> that's what we. That's what nobody ever tried in those films. Just start. Yo. Just start. Pull your motherfucking meat. dick out of your friend. I went to sleep on purpose. What's yeah, happening? yeah, yeah, yeah. What's I've happening? I've been waiting yo? for you. I've been <laughs> waiting for you, Freddie. <laughs> okay, Jason. I know why you're so stiff. You know what I mean, Michael. I know what you really want to stab. <laughs> okay, I know what you really want to stab, Michael. All right. He did used to interrupt. He used to kill people when they had sex, too, Mike Myers. Yeah. I think he was upset about it. He that. killed a gay couple in the last one. I know. Yeah, he homophobic. Did he? Yeah, I didn't think it was homophobic. I thought it was equality, okay? All right. <laughs> That's facts, yeah, bro. Come Gays on. can get it, too. That's right. Diversity. It, by the way, diversity in a horror movie means somebody's getting killed. That's yeah. true. What are we talking about here? That's true. If you're going to have diversity in a horror movie, Michael Myers has to kill the person. Yeah. And I remember they made a thing about that. They was like, oh, that's homophobic. That is not homophobic. That's equality. Yeah. That's diversity. Why do you think that black people die first often in horror movies? Not anymore. Yeah, definitely not anymore. But initially. They got rid of that stereotype. But why? Uh, that's like a it? great question. I don't know. I don't know, because why were we in the scare movies anyway? Because half the shit, we're not going to be in that situation anyway. Yeah, I, I think they killed we're them first because black, black lives don't matter, bro. Whoa. Yeah. That's Whoa. what I think, even in horror movies. Whoa. I, I thought that we're was, never going to be in a Chainsaw Massacre, though. Even why though not? they made one with Trey Songz. Mad black people in Texas, but they're not. We're Chainsaw not going Massacre to star and Trey the Truth will be fired. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Side note: Did y'all see the Ludacris one with Queen Latifah? Which one? Y'all didn't see that movie? No, it's not good. Anaconda? He said that shit like it was about wow. to be so fire. No, because I thought y'all going to see <laughs> have some... Taylor, no, no, no. Taylor I'm said sorry. that shit like it was about... Yo, did you see that movie? That <laughs> because it was bad, but it was so bad it was good, though. That's how you got to tell people when they got a little dick. Hype them up just like that. Yo, have y'all seen... Like, yeah, have you seen... You seen Kanye's yeah. dick, man? <laughs> Yo, have you seen Kanye? Have you dick? seen Kanye's dick? It ain't big as Pete's. <laughs> <laughs> as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. 